The Small Business Show, episode 373 for Wednesday, March 30th, 2022. Greetings, folks, and welcome to, or welcome back to the Small Business Show here at businessshow.co, the show where we are always small businessing, and then we are talking about it once a week here. Sponsors for this episode include HunterDouglas.com slash SBS, where you can go and get your free style, get smarter design guide and BankNovo.com slash SBS, where you can get your free business banking account in just 10 minutes. We'll talk about each of those in a little more detail shortly here for now here, back here, finally back here in Durham, New Hampshire. I'm Dave Hamilton. And in Lafayette, California, I'm Shannon Jean. We are both coming back from some travels. Yeah, and, that's uh, right. Yeah. Ready to go. <laughs> ready to go. Yeah. yeah. It was, um, I was away for 12 days and, and for two different conferences. And I actually have some things to share about both of them. I was at South by Southwest and then uh, in Austin. And then after that, I went to LA for podcast movement evolutions. Uh, it's rare for me to have two conferences that are back to back. But when I looked at the schedule for this, I couldn't justify skipping either one of these, uh, especially after, you know, so many years of not being able to go to these conferences. Yeah, sure. And, and I looked at the schedule and it was like, okay, well, if I'm leaving Austin on Sunday and I need to be in LA on Wednesday, flying back to New Hampshire, halfway across the country to then turn around two days later and fly all the way across the country, the other direction did not make sense to me. So I figured, well, I'll just keep heading west. And so I did. I just went to L.A. and got there a few days early. My son came down from Portland. It was his spring break and my wife came out. So we had a few days of of sort of, you know, uh, family time in between. And then nice. and then, you know, the, the other conference sort of kicked up. But, yeah, it worked out. You you had a uh, a very non business trip, didn't you? It was terrific. Yeah, it was the first time. <laughs> <laughs> it was great. Well, I was worried about it because I was going to be really off the grid for a long period of time. We sure. drove uh, about 20, I think 2,400 miles, rented a Sprinter big van and saw some great stuff. Went to Moab and to uh, Bonneville Salt Flats and a lot nice. of stuff in Utah, Grand Canyon, back through Arizona, Joshua Tree. Um, it was, it was great. I really enjoyed it, but there was large sections where, uh, you know, you're just literally like go in the middle of nowhere and make a left, uh, oh. in the desert. And uh, so, but it was great. I, it was wonderful. My wife and I, we had a great time and awesome. saw some awesome stuff and, uh, I really enjoyed it. It was, it was really cool. That's cool. That's great. Yeah. I like it. it wasn't, uh -huh. Yeah. There wasn't too much pain when I got back. I mean, you know, you have to kind of manage, <laughs> jumping back into things. But the key for us, we came back on a Friday. Okay. Which was great because I had the weekend to uh, kind of ramp back up. And um, I would highly advise if you could do that to uh, to do it. Because then I didn't hit have to hit the ground Monday so bad because I kind of eased back into it. That's good advice. Yes. I, I Managing your the the work that it will need to happen either while you're gone during your trip or or certainly when you get back is is a smart thing to plan for i i did the same thing i came back saturday morning and uh so i had all day sunday uh, before i had to get into monday you know and it, it yeah. made a big difference the other thing that made a difference is and this wouldn't have been relevant for your trip but i knew going into this trip that i was going to need to work uh, it, you know, it wasn't going to, a lot of times when I go to a conference, I mean, I'm certainly working at the conference, but I'm often, uh, delaying a lot of the things that I would do is sort of my routine here. If I was in the office, right. You, you know, there's, there's sure. those things. And, and for this trip, I knew I'm going to be away for 12 days. It's going to be the end of the month. It's the end of the quarter for a variety of reasons. I just couldn't shirk my responsibilities for what effectively would become two weeks, you, you know? And, and so the first thing I did was give myself permission to like not attend the the conference one afternoon and hole up in my hotel room and actually do work. That's something I that would be my natural inclination because I'm I'm actually an intro, introvert. I, I know I'm not shy, but that doesn't mean right. I'm an extrovert. Right. I've, I've that is learned behavior. But my default would be to happily hole up, avoid people and and, you know, and do work or something. You know, it do, doesn't matter what, but I, I would hole up. 
So I gave myself permission to do that, which I normally do not do when I travel. And that that in and of itself was perhaps the biggest thing. Although the second thing was equally as important for me, at least in, in the moment. And that was traveling with a portable monitor for my laptop. Oh. In my office, I am... Uh, you know, I am a two monitor person at my at, at oh, my yeah. desk and at my podcast station here. Right. Like I right. always have two screens. And when I travel, you know, I have my laptop and yes, I use an Apple laptop so I can use the whole sidecar thing with my iPad and use that as a second screen. And I've done that at times, but I I travel with a smaller iPad. I like an iPad mini. So it's not quite, you know, it's a nine inch screen. It's not doesn't have quite right. the real estate. So I traveled this time. uh the, the one that I brought with me was the Lenovo ThinkVision M14, and it's a 14-inch, uh, super slim. It comes in a nice little case. It is, bu- I'll call it bus-powered, meaning it's powered by your computer. So I plug a USB-C oh, cable nice. between the two, and then that's it. No AC. Correct. It, huh? the, the AC oh, is plugged weird. into the computer, and, yeah. and that's it. Yeah, so it's super easy to set up, and it becomes the second monitor, and it was a game-changer for me. Like... Yeah, com- way more productive. Completely right? changed my productivity. Yeah. And and part of it, I think, is because I'm so used to two screens. If I was used to one screen, then it probably wouldn't make any difference, y- you know, because I'm already I know how to be productive that way. But I don't. I am most productive on two screens. And so having that, there's another one I was testing out to the um, it's the Asus. Uh, what's the name of it? The Zen screen. And that's a slightly larger one. That's 15.6 inches. And the same kind of thing, USB-C, you just plug it in and, and away it goes. Um, Check it in with your, your luggage or did you carry it as carry I don't know if they would have liked to know that it was checked in my bag, but I did check yeah. it in my checked bag. Yeah. Yeah. That's I, good. Good to know. It, yeah. No, these, these things were, um, I, like I said, invaluable. It, it just makes yeah. a huge difference to, to, um, to no, just I being get, productive. I just checked as you were talking, you know, I have yeah. like 22 windows uh, yeah. on my various <laughs> screens, uh, you know, th- th- I don't know how you do it. And so that, that's a great tip is to carry that. And it, uh, yeah. And they're, they're, you know, relatively inexpensive, 200 bucks for the, for the Zen screen and 250 for the, the Lenovo, the think vision. So, uh, you know, you're, you're not going to break the bank on these things and they just work. Uh, and if that's you cool. connect connecting to a Mac, the think vision one is actually a touch screen. Although the Mac does not have any support for it as a touchscreen. So uh, if you but if you connected it to your, you know, your Android phone or your Windows machine, you could you could actually use it as a touchscreen if you wanted to. I, I didn't didn't even bother. Me. I, could, right. I just wanted a screen. Like I didn't, I didn't care. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It was, Absolutely. The, you know, and it looks fine. Like it, it, it actually looks great. It looks better than it needs to is perhaps the, the way I'll say it. So that's, that's my that's my advice. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know. One of the things coming back today, I, I read a very interesting article with a provocative title that I, I you know, we're going to kind of steal and use for this show is, you know, and we're going to talk about this more in a bit, the problem with giving employees what they want. Oh, I like that. Yes. Yeah. And, and <laughs> th- 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 there's a lot of nuance to it, but it's really an interesting topic and I'm looking forward to... Uh, the discussion with you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I saw a couple of things at, at South by Southwest that I want to share here on the show okay. and I'm going to spread them out over the course of a, a couple of weeks here, just so, so that we, we don't just do it all at once. Um, the first thing that I want to talk about is this interview I saw and I'm going to, um, I hope I pronounce his name right. It was an interview with Reggie Phils I may. And uh, my joke is I may be mispronouncing his name, but uh, <laughs> right. but I'm, I, I don't think I am. I think I got it right. He uh, was the is is retired, but he was the president and COO of Nintendo. Uh, That's right. Yeah. And fascinating story from this guy. I mean, he, he they touched briefly on his, you know, beginnings in a, you know, uh, not affluent neighborhood in Brooklyn uh, where he, you know, where he came from. But he didn't really spend a whole lot of time dwelling on that. Let's let's say he, you know, he, he pushed himself. He, he moved forward. He was the first non-Asian, non-white person hired in in any sort of role like that at mm-hmm. Nintendo. He was actually hired as the VP of sales and. While he was being courted for that position, he demanded a meeting with the then president um, 
and as he was taking the job, he found out later that that almost cost him the job, but he would have been okay with that. He knew that he was going to work very closely with this person and he needed to know if he could actually work with this person and, and, and develop a rapport with them. And so he, he did now this, the person that he, he talked with, I don't have the, the, the guy's name, but this person was the first non Nintendo family member of the business or non family member of, of Nintendo. Uh, and yeah. he was, he was Asian and in, in, in Japan and became kind of a mentor to him. But, uh, it he was a fascinating story. You know, he became called the, the Reginator. Uh, he was, he was always about just opening doors and pushing forward, uh, and, and, you know, on, under his watch, the Nintendo DS, the Wii, the Switch, all, you know, were products that, that came out. And uh, it, it was just interesting to hear him talk not only about his career, but for the reasons that he retired. And this was the part that made me think about our show here. And he quit because he wanted to do other things. And he knew that if his, even if he could delegate, he, you know, a lot of his, day-to-day -day responsibilities, let's say, he would still have the oversight responsibility. And it, it on a very different level, reminded me of, of what has happened with me since, we, um, since the Mac Observer was acquired. I didn't think that that was taking up a lot of my time, Shannon. Yeah, because, I, you know, it was it was on autopilot. Right. You, yeah. you know, yes. and 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 for better and for worse, I will say, like it is that business is already I can see things. It is doing much better having someone at the helm that is focused on it and pushing it forward. Like, it's fantastic. It's great. Yep. But um, I just I you know, I thought because when I when I started telling friends like, oh, yeah, you know, it's, the site's been acquired. They're like, oh, great. You can retire now. I'm like, yeah, you know, I, I don't really spend that much time on it. So I don't think it's going to make it. It's not going to make any difference. You know, I have backbeat. I have my shows that we do, you know, those sorts of things. And yet in the last few months, I found that my inbox is much cleaner. I have more time to like do side projects and things like that. It's like, I guess it was taking up more mental space than I realized. And, and when he said this, it was like, this is really interesting because he said he wanted to write books. He wanted to do some board work. He wanted to teach about his experiences. He wanted to do interviews like he was doing at South by Southwest. And he couldn't do those things while he was running the company and it was really interesting to me to, you know, we always think, well, we can always add more to our plate. And I know I am very much guilty of that. And I, I think it's possible there might be another person here that 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 does the same thing. <laughs> I, I don't want to put words in anybody's mouth, but, you know, the door's open. Um, but um, but it was really interesting that that was the reason he quit. Now, obviously, he got himself to a point where financially he didn't need the paycheck anymore. I, Correct. You know, yes. right. But I, I got the feeling that that had been true for quite some time and that he was working because he wanted to work and he enjoyed the projects. He enjoyed the challenge, he enjoyed leading the team, uh, you know, and, and, and he was working in the gaming industry. So like he was literally playing games often. And he said that they asked him like, how much gaming did you do? He's like, Oh, daily. And he says, I would work with the team and, and we would talk on Mondays about the games that we played over the weekend and all that stuff. So he had a pretty fun job, you know, all things considered, but it didn't leave him time to do the things that he wanted to do. And he was smart enough to know that, uh, which is, which is sort of the key. Yeah. And that's part of what I wanted to just share here. So, yeah. Also, yeah. And I think it's being self-aware, Yeah, and, you know, and I, I think as small business owners, it can be challenging. Uh, at least I know what it was for me Yeah, to realize, okay, like your point where you look and see your former business doing really well um, because someone has maybe some new energy, new ideas, um, new focus, right? Yeah. Uh, and and I, I have been through that as well. And it's it's a different feeling knowing, you, stepping away, knowing that it's going to do great without you and then transitioning to like, man, I'm so happy it's doing great. And seeing these businesses out there under the helm of other people that you've either sold or yeah, right. you were you were mentored right. and brought them up and yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, businesses that are you know still around today that I started in my bedroom uh, 25, 30 years ago. You know, it's great, yeah. um, but it's a it's it's a big transition to be able to step away, and uh, uh, that that's a good thing to study. It was yeah, I know it was fascinating. I was um, I I actually watched that interview remotely. Uh, South by this year. 
it, it had not, that was the first show that was canceled in the United States in 2020, right? That, that show oh, did yeah, not yeah. happen in 2020. So it had been since 2019 and that year they, they did an admirable job of rejiggering as much of the content as they could and, and putting things online. And then certainly last year they did a fantastic job of it. And this year, certainly they brought back the in-person part. But they also brought the um, they left the online portion in place. And in fact, I would say they iterated on that and made that better, too. So there was there, the first three days of South by Southwest. I consumed from here. I attended from here. My family was not home, which worked out really well. Uh, but I, I, I had some some projects to do very specifically cleaning up my office and then cleaning up the studio here and just reorganizing things. And it was perfect to have these kinds of sessions on while I was doing oh, yeah. those things because it's, you know, I would watch the first five minutes, orient myself to who the people were, how they sounded. And then I didn't have to just watch cause it's, I mean, it's basically like, it would be like watching you and me do the show. Right. Yes. You know, <laughs> and, and it's just two people talking. And so it was very easy for me to pay attention like you would to this podcast without me, um, you know, without just gluing my eyes to the screen, which is right. what happens to all the people in the room anyway. They all have their laptops out there sort of doing other things and listening, uh, you know, kind of in the background often. I don't want to say yes. every attendee, but it's it's not uncommon at, at conferences. And and so it was it was an interesting thing. And then, of course, I went and, you know, I flew down and, and saw the rest of, of South by Southwest in person. But they did a, fa a great job both with sessions like this and also uh, movies. And I have a couple of movies to talk about. I, I, I want to get to our topic for the day. So we will, I will talk about these two movies the next time we get together cool. here. Yeah. But they, they did a good job at, at making this hybrid conference really work well. So, and that's not easy. So yeah, it was good. Uh, awesome. I want to talk about the problem with giving employees what they want. The next thing I want to talk about are our two sponsors. Listen, Fortune favors the bold, the strong, the brave. And for your business to break out of anything holding you back, you need business checking as brave as you are. And that's why we're introducing our sponsor, Novo Business Checking. Novo is powerfully simple business checking. And unlike traditional banking model, Novo has no minimum balances, no transaction limits, and no hidden fees. Because instead of a one-size-fits-all approach, Shannon, Novo is customized to your business to save you time and free up cash flow. And they have seamless integrations to Stripe, Shopify, QuickBooks Online, and more. And you can sign up for Novo for free to join the community of over 150,000 fearless small businesses, people who are small businessing, who have found the customizable business checking solution that admires the brave. Sign up for your free business checking account right now at novo.co slash SBS and use that link because small business show listeners get access to over $5,000 in perks and discounts. Go to novo.co slash SBS to sign up for free. Novo.co slash SBS. Novo Platform Inc. is a fintech, not a bank. Banking services provided by Middlesex Federal Savings FA, member FDIC. Terms and conditions apply, of course, and our thanks to banknovo.com slash SBS for sponsoring this episode. Who doesn't love to live well, to be perfectly at ease in comfort and in style? Well, if you do, our sponsor, Hunter Douglas, can help you do just that with their innovative window shade designs, gorgeous fabrics, and control systems so advanced they can be scheduled to automatically adjust to their optimal position throughout the day. you got to go and visit HunterDouglas.com slash SBS today so that you can see the way that these shades diffuse harsh sunlight and cast this glow across the room. You can, you can see how you can enjoy the view outside the window while protecting your privacy inside. And these shades have superior insulation that keep you warmer in winter, cooler in summer, and lower your utility bills. And then you can tap into Hunter Douglas's PowerView technology, which uses your phone, and you can set your shades to automatically reposition for the perfect balance of light, privacy, and insulation morning, noon, and night. You're going to want to check this stuff out. It's, it's pretty amazing, and you can live beautifully with Hunter Douglas. Visit HunterDouglas.com slash SBS today for your free Style Get Smarter design guide with fresh takes 
creative ideas, and smart solutions for dressing your windows. That is HunterDouglas.com slash SBS for your free design guide. And our thanks to Hunter Douglas for sponsoring this episode. And with that, Shannon, I want to talk about the problem with them giving employees what they want. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, so I, I read this article, and that was the title, Inc. Magazine. We're going to talk a little bit about the article. Okay. But yep. it really got me thinking about the different types of employees. And there's a few different ways to, to look at this. Um, and, and so I'm going to back up and really start at the beginning. And one of the things that is important to understand during this whole concept is a thing called the arrival fallacy. That okay. Once you get to a certain spot, you're going to be totally happy and you've achieved all everything uh, and you're, you're done. Right. But it just doesn't work. It never you're, happens. No. No, you want happens. more. Yeah. Yes. You always want more. It's it's really, uh, and, and as I got to thinking about this, you know, our whole concept of uh, systems over goals really pertains to this because oh. it's the journey, which is the system that you're developing that you created. That's what brings you long lasting satisfaction because as you work and build things in your personal life, your business, your, you know, everything, those are the things that you're going to use over and over as you achieve different things, you build your talent stack over time. Yeah. So understanding that arrival fallacy, it really pertains to your employees as well, right? It's this false belief that reaching a valued destination can sustain happiness. Right? Okay. I All right. I, yeah. I like this arrival fallacy. Okay. Yeah. 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 So we sense. start there's as our base. And, and, and the thing about it is, uh, in this Inc. Uh, magazine article, they it was a company talking about, hey, should we should we open up offices again and bring people back in, come back to work, or do we just keep working remotely? And we did an episode of a, a similar question, yeah. uh, I think last year. And and in this case, this company asked their they first started and asked the employees, what do you want? And they were shocked because. All the employees talked about how great the office was and the camaraderie and the lunchroom and the things and the and the interactivity and everything. But when the founders started thinking about it, like, you know, people are sitting like in their cubes with their headphones on and the, and the break room's always a mess and they're not doing this and, <laughs> and they're not collaborating like this and they're not happy having to commute into the office, this kind of thing. And what it turned out was what people were responding to is, and what they wanted was like a fantasy of what office life could be, not oh. the re actual reality, looking at the pros and cons. And Even though they had already experienced the reality, they had, they yeah. had repainted it into the fantasy after. And I think all of us. Yeah, yeah we do. Yeah. And, and it, oh, you remember, us, I mean, that's, that's a, that's a defense mechanism, right? You like, yes. I've always said, if you remembered what it was like for the first couple of months at home with a newborn, you would never, ever <laughs> never have another that. second. You, the the Correct. second child would Correct. never happen, but yeah. it does often. So, yeah. Yes. Yes. yeah. That's why your parents tell you you were such a great baby because they don't remember. You <laughs> forget. Well, my parents yeah, actually remember. remember how yeah, terrible yeah. I was, but that's okay. <laughs> yeah. But so this, this concept is in, they realize that because they're like, wait, you know, these people don't show up for the meeting or this person doesn't even do this or that. Yeah. So they, in, in this particular instance, they flipped a script and they, decided to present the pros and cons of the of an office space, the costs, um, the commute, all these other issues. And they asked a very different question. Instead of what, what do you want? They asked, what would you decide in this situation? If they the were managing the business. Yes. Oh, oh. What would you decide? Because it, all, it, it, it introduces a whole different level of ownership, right? Yeah. Instead of, oh, it's somebody else's decision. It doesn't matter. Well, it does matter because they were trying to explain, look, these are the costs associated with opening up the offices again. Well, if we don't do that, we could do other things with that money, you know, right? hire more people, yeah. lessen the burden, uh, add more perks or change things or increase our marketing and maybe grow the company. So they, they flipped the script and presented it that way. And they got very, very different answers. Because people had, you know, they analyzed it in a, in a whole different manner and they decided not to open their offices again. Right. It, and Fascinating. And we'll link this article. Yeah. And no, it, that's that, really, it makes, you know, as you present it this way, it makes perfect sense. Right. Because we, we think we know what we want 
but putting yourself in the mindset of having to make the decision changes things dramatically. And I, I've stumbled, I'm sure as, as we all have, you know, I've stumbled into this both in managing people and also in, you know, managing slash raising my kids occasionally, you know, the, the moment of brilliance will come up, uh, where you put the burden on them and it changes everything. I, I will share a story. Um, if you are listening to this with your young kids and, um, they have not inherited their own decisions about Santa Claus, then perhaps skip this section. And we do, we put chapters in the show, but I, I think a lot of people don't listen to this with their kids. So, uh, so I think I'm okay sharing this. I stumbled into this one thing, Shannon, it's perhaps the best parenting moment I ever had. I made a lot of parenting mistakes, uh, but I, I was traveling. I happened to be down in Austin. This was many, many years ago. And my wife alerts me. The kids cornered me in the car today. They asked me about <laughs> Santa. I had to fess up like, okay, all right, fine. You know, I, it was going to happen. Like, okay, great. Sure. You know, sure. The kids are getting older. That's how it works. And uh, I, I didn't think much of it, to be perfectly honest. The fact that I had time to think about it, I don't, I don't think was a factor, but I, I share the factor. And so that evening I was on the phone. We were, I was at our office in Austin when we had an office there and, uh, you know, it was before my kids were going to go to bed. So I, I, we were there late doing something. I think we were building furniture for a new, new office or something. But anyway, it took a minute and, you know, talked to my kids. And so my daughter gets on the phone and she's like, uh, did mama tell you? And I'm like, I, I think so. What do you, what do you mean? She's like, we know about Santa. And I was like, and I did for whatever reason, because she was being a little cagey. I just sort of went with it and I said, well, what do you know? And she said, yeah, well, that's good. mama told us that, you know, Santa's not real. And I said, oh, well, that's interesting. And she said, well, do you think Santa's not real? And again, this was just dumb luck that I found myself in this, in this particular scenario at answering that question. And I said, well, here's the thing. Um, I believe in Santa and every Christmas morning I wake up and there are gifts under the tree for the entire family from Santa. And she said, uh, wait a minute. Does that mean if we don't believe in Santa, we don't get <laughs> gifts from Santa? And the, I told her, I said, I don't know the answer because I've never tried it. And she said, oh, I could hear like, dang it. Like he put me in a corner here. And I said, and I, and I stopped her. I said, no, I said, here's the thing. The only thing that has changed today is that the decision as to whether or not you believe in Santa has shifted from us to you. We decided that you believed in Santa. Today, you get to decide whether or not you believe. That's the only thing that has changed. I said, I have chosen to continue to believe. And uh, she was like, yeah. I think I'm going to continue. Way to do it. I think I'm going to continue to believe too. But it's the same kind of scenario, right? Where it's like ownership. it, it, it yeah, cha it, the the ownership of it, and that's all it is is the ownership of it, and um and it worked out very well. Our our family still gets gifts from Santa every year. It's amazing. Perfect. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's good. It's, yeah, so it's a it, nice it, tradition. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It is. Yeah. And so thinking on this concept of you know this, what would you decide, and you know. People don't really know it, what they really want, and they don't understand. They they keep this this arrival fallacy. It's just going to keep getting better and better. Yeah, gonna, you know, be so happy. Well, I would argue that the same concept or this concept is this is very similar when you're talking about salaries, benefits, and other perks. Oh, for sure. Or or Santa. Yeah. Or yeah. Or Santa. That's right. <laughs> and and you know the thing about money, like I, I I'll admit, if in many of my businesses, I've often felt walking around like, God, I wish I could pay these people more. You know, I just oh, always feel that way. Same right? all the time. And, and yeah. Yeah. And I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. It's just a fact. And, but there were often people that constantly would hammer us about salary. And it took me a long time to realize that there's more going on here than just the money, right? Mm. It's the, it is this, Oh, if I just make a little bit more, I'll be happy and it'll solve my problem. I'll, get a car, I'll fix my car, I'll do whatever, whatever. But there's a particular personality type that it, it just kind of keeps coming back and back and back again. Yeah, I've, I've encountered these people. It's difficult. Yes. Yeah. It is difficult. And I think what, you know, you, you have to be very upfront, especially with younger employees that maybe ha that don't have a lot of experience in the business uh, field. And I have 
have uh, have hired those people throughout my whole career. Yeah. And the one thing that I think is very important is when you hire them is and and also to repeat it when you're talking about salaries is that hey, we base our salaries on results and impact on the company's profitability. Right? Oh, I like very that. Very important yeah. that they get that understanding. Of course you have to be competitive. Yeah. But you don't want this every time, you know, hey, I've got a problem. You've got to have, now you can tell people solve problems, uh, short-term issues. We did a show about loaning employees money before. Yeah. Um, there's all kinds of ways you can help people solve those issues, but this is different. Um, the other thing I really uh, like and, and help has helped me get out of this uh, arrival fallacy when it comes to salary is, is don't do performance reviews and salary reviews at the same time helps to disconnect an employee's sense of value from just what they make. Yeah. Be- because yeah, because you might not be able to, like the company might yeah, not be able exactly. to afford to pay them exactly. more. Exactly. Even though they're doing well. Like the fact that they're doing yes. well might be the reason that the company can keep them employed. Well, and that is a reward in and of itself. I know, right? but it it's hard again. to say that to people, I, especially it, it people is. of a certain, like yes. I, it, there, there was, and it's, I'm finding it less the case with people entering the workforce right now. So, you know, the, and I hate to talk about ages, but, but, you know, yeah. and I will speak generally, you know, the people under 30, I, I actually, I'm, I, I don't find this problem with it, but it's that, it's that, you know, 30 to 40 range right now. Um, where there's a lot of that, well, my self-worth is tied up in getting a raise every yes. year. And that yeah. is something if you can- I think it's just cultural and, is what it is. Yes. yes. And and yeah. I understand it, but from a small business perspective, when you know things go up and down and there's good years and bad years and there's lots of external uh, things that impact your business that you yeah. have to you know, deal with, yeah. uh, it-, it if you can separate those two performance reviews and you could do performance and, and, and I wouldn't do them at the end of the year, uh, you know, performance reviews are great to do quarterly, you know, biannually yeah. stuff like that. And then you do salary reviews, but I like to do them, you know, earlier in the year because then you've had time to look and see how was it last year, what's going on. Mm. And, and, but the, I think the most important thing is you're constantly training your employees that not all of their value is just wrapped up in, in, you know, the check we write them every two weeks. Well, you know, although a lot of it is, of course. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, right. That, you know. Like yeah, most, most employees wouldn't stay if you stopped yeah. paying them. Right. Of course because not. they couldn't afford to that. I yes. mean, that's reason number one, whether they would choose to, if they had financial independence, that's a whole other, like that's an impossible question for most people to answer. So yeah, uh, it's not and, even worth and, asking. But, yeah. Right. But you're going to get hit up with employees. Like I, I just, you know, I've had employees that come to me and said, look, I need to make X and then everything will work in my life. And you go, well, you know, it's I really want true. to keep this person, yeah. but it's not. And I've done it. I've given them X. I have and to. then six, six months down the line, oh, hey, you know what? I did, you know, this kind of thing. I was like, oh man, that was a mistake. Um, and, yep. and the last thing I, I, I think I, I, also I, I, I have stories that I cannot share. Yes. Uh, that, that are exactly this. It's, it, you know, you, you, the first time you think, okay, like I value this person. They make a good point. Uh, if we do have the money that we can carve out for this person, like, okay, you know what, let's do it. And then yeah, three to six months later, you find yourself in a very similar conversation and you try to point out like, Hey, uh, three to six months ago, we we did this thing. Well, but it's and it's like, oh, I mistrained yeah. you. Shoot, yes. this is my fault. Yep, that's right. Yep, yeah. uh, and and I think that the you also have to train your employees when it comes to the perks that you give them. Mm. Uh, you know what happens is when you introduce a perk and it's just there and there and there. Whether it's uh, I don't know, you know, food in the break room oh, yeah. or you know, time off here, this kind of thing. I remember when it, I was at it, Citibank, they took. Uh, they were paying for everybody's lunch every day. And then, yeah. And that went on. That just becomes a standard. It right? was the standard. And then it was yes. like, that needs the, the memo went out and it was like, that's yeah. over. And it's like, oh, yeah, see, what? That's right. That's right. So my, my thing with perks is you want to make them temporary and you want to, uh, make that like rotational. You want to keep rotating things in and out because perks are great, but when you bring them back or you introduce different ones, you, you get a new 
or your employees get a new dopamine hit, right? Oh, for <laughs> sure. No, it's, that's you're totally this right. Is cool. Yeah. Uh, something new. They're buying lunch today, or uh, we're all going out to this. We're not saving everything up to an end of year big dinner event or whatever. Yeah, right. We're right. sprinkling this stuff throughout the year, whether it's bringing in breakfast to everybody or taking everybody out or whatever. You, you know, your business is, is unique, but keep introducing those things. And so if you if you focus on uh, you know, how you manage the salaries, how you manage those conversations, making sure they understand that they're, they're, you know, tied to uh, productivity and profitability and how they how those people impact them to split out your performance reviews from your salary reviews. And then finally make your perks temporary and on a rotational basis. I think you can address this uh, part of this arrival fallacy and this problem with giving employees what they want because they don't like all of us, we don't always know what we want and what we think we want is often different than what we need. Well, that's it. And it, like you said, flipping the script on it, it is really a, a great exercise for everyone involved because you, I mean, you as the, the, the person who's in that management role, well, you, you're, you know, you only have one set of ideas at yours. So you know, giving other people the ability to share ideas with you or putting them in the position where they can share them with you, you might actually hear something that's better. In fact, you probably will. Yeah. But it'll certainly be different. It'll certainly be different. And and even that might catalyze a conversation that leads to, you know, whatever the the ultimate answer is. But the 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 most important part is giving employees, putting employees in that position where the perspective is on the bigger picture. Because it, yeah. it like yeah, it it's almost like infusing transparency into the process. Right. You know, everybody wants to see the big the big picture. Right. We all want transparency in today's world. That is table stakes in so many things far more than it used to be. Right. You know, just because we have access to so much data. But this is a, a different twist on that. But I think it's an important yeah. one that it's like, yeah, you want to you want to you want transparency. Well, OK, let's let's role play. You make the decision. Oh, well, yeah. oh, wow. I, I, have, I never thought I, about it, it this it, way before. Yeah. Right. And I have mixed feelings on the transparency issue because, well, we could probably do a whole show on that. Mm. And I do believe uh, transparency is important and authenticity is probably more important to, in my opinion. Oh, I like that. We, yes. We, we should, we should break those out and, and do an episode on that because I think there's some real pitfalls that you need to avoid if you go down that transparency path and, uh, Employees definitely think different than you do, and what they think is a priority yeah. uh, is often very different, and you can run up against those things when you're super open, transparent about, about everything. But, yeah, uh, no, you're, I've, I've definitely created scenarios. Yeah, let's, um, yeah. maybe let's do yeah, that let's, for the next we'll, episode. We'll yeah, transparency yeah. and transparency yeah. versus yeah. authenticity. Yeah. 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 But yeah. I'd love to hear about this. You know, do, do you give your employees everything they want, you know, or do you have some lessons you could share with us about how that's you know, backfired or worked well for you, feedback at businessshow.co or, you know, go up to the uh, small business support group, businessshow.co slash Facebook and share your stories. We'd love to hear it. Yeah, you. absolutely. Yeah. Good stuff. I like this. I'm, you've got me thinking. So that's a, that's a good thing. I, I think there you go. <laughs> and we'll put the links in the, in the show notes. So you can read that article and learn more about the, uh, the, the arrival fallacy. Sounds good. Fun stuff. Thanks, Shannon. I appreciate it. Thanks for listening, folks. As he said, feedback at businessshow.co. Make sure you check out our sponsors, banknovo.com slash SBS, hunterdouglas.com slash SBS. Keep living that charmed life. See you next week. <laughs>